All right, it looks like we are good to go, uh, and hopefully everyone else out there is ready for another season uh, of ULOL. We are getting things all set up and ready for all of you guys out there, but I do want to welcome you back to a brand new year. It's 2017, time to learn new stuff. Whatever you guys are studying out there, it's time to study some League of Legends. Now, there's a few new things to go over this season, but before we do go over those, do you want to welcome you to our first uh, televised game that we're going to be broadcasting here uh, between the University of Massachusetts and Amherst and McMaster University. Now, uh, McMaster are coming in as maybe a little bit of a favorite after, oh wait, just winning CSL a couple of years ago. Uh, they've performed very, very well in uh, things like the uh, Collegiate Championship Series previously, as well as last season. So coming in as maybe a little bit of favorites. Uh, they do have some new faces on the team. We'll get a chance to talk about those. They're facing off against University uh, of Massachusetts, who at least on paper do not necessarily have the same, uh, you know, uh, e elos as far as that's concerned. But we've never seen either one of these two teams play in their current iterations. And that's what we're about to watch here today. Uh, so do you want to welcome everyone there? While I've been filling time, do you want to uh, introduce my co-caster, Fekez? We are getting things ready to go. Yeah, I got the stream going, no worries. Yeah, the uh, client kind of derped my uh, OBS overlay, but it's good, no worries. I'm so glad to be here, Rapid. So glad you're here with me. Picks and band phases. Uh, let's go through those, actually. Hecarim, uh, Victor, and Tom Kinch, actually, uh, out of all, all uh, creatures banned away by University of Massachusetts. And of course, on the other side, Katarina, Poppy, and Ringar banned away by McMaster, not wanting to deal with a cat in the jungle. He's actually still really strong. If he gets going, can completely burst somebody down with one combo within almost a flash of a second. You can't really even react to it sometimes, although they probably can, because they're way better than I am. But uh, still, Ringar, not wanting to be dealt with. But a, uh, a Yorick covered. I don't know, he got a rework, but I don't, I don't, still don't think he's in the position to be played competitively, but that is one of the beauties of Collegiate League of Legends, is that you get to see these niche, niche picks, and uh, AO to Django, it might just be a thing for him. Well, also, uh, not just niche picks, but niche bans. Nice to see the respect yeah. to X-Tray taking away his Katarina. Uh, X-Tray's got some big shoes to fill. He's filling in for Duosec, a guy that you guys might have, uh, or not not, uh, not X-Tray, that'd be on the other side. But either way, uh, X-Tray is a guy that's got big shoes to fill because he's going up against uh, McMaster University. Their mid lane has always been their strength, and so uh, it's certainly a big thing to focus on here. Don't want to give him his comfort pick taking that away right off the bat. But we do have to keep up with things. Now, the Janna Hover here, for me, is a little bit bittersweet uh, because the uh, support player over on uh, McMaster University was named Janna Mechanics. He's not coming back this season, so uh, that Hover was a little bit... Uh, brought a tear to my eye. But uh, shouldn't be seeing any Janna uh, unless the meta has shifted drastically since I last watched Competitive League of Legends, which was a few hours ago. So I think we're good and we're safe. The Nautilus Hover, though, looks a lot more realistic. Yeah, and you were talking about big shoes to fill. One true Beery Beery, uh, yeah, has a lot to live up to with Janna Mechanics. Janna Mechanics was a really, really good, very well thought out support player. Uh, knew exactly, uh, knew how to work with Tall White Bro. Of course, Tall White Bro not in this game. I believe he is still on the team of Master, along with Han Solo from last year's team. Autumn Clouds, though, is stepping in, taking his place. So it's actually just Han Solo uh, coming in from last year's McMaster team that we saw going through the division. So uh, Autumn Clouds and uh, One True Beer Beery, it's going to be a different lane that we've ever seen in the bot lane. So uh, not don't have to worry about synergy because, I mean, we don't know how the synergy works out so far. But we do know that, uh, of course, uh, uh, Tall White Bro and Janna Mechanics, they had a great chemistry. We're going to see if that can be replicated this year with uh, whoever they put in the bot lane. And, uh, yeah, and like you were talking about, uh, Nito in the mid lane, filling in for Duosec now. Duosec has moved on to bigger and better things. And now Nito, he has a huge role to fill as Duosec, maybe one of their most famous players on McMaster University. Okay, well, you remember that one time, uh, Fekes, that I said that one thing about the Janna not being out there? Yeah, right. uh, well, <laughs> Nito is going to have some Tornitos out there uh, picking the Janna there for McMaster. Now, you know, this is why we never like to speak too soon as casters. I just like to call it the caster curse. Because that's going to be the support pick, theoretically, unless, once again, I am way, way off. I feel a little bit more certain predicting that as the support pick. To go in along with Jin, and that is going to make Jin a lot more uh, powerful. But uh, as a support pick, it's certainly not something that we're super used to seeing. Now, if you look across the board, though, that Vagar hover might be a counter support coming in. 
Yeah, there's actually been a lot of uh, odd, odd supports coming in. Uh, in high elo play, we have Malzahar support, who's actually a... Uh, oh, man. Oh, uh, well, yeah, well, there you, you go. You called it, Becca. I did. I'm really happy about that, because Malzahar support's actually been really popular. Now, with that being said, one of the biggest advantages to him is throwing his Malefic Visions onto uh, as onto the ADC, but you have Jan on the other side. You should throw a shield and negate a, a huge amount of damage from... Uh, Malzahar support. Now, of course, that's going to be a different story when you hit level 6, but uh, or the early laning phase, I'm still going to give to McMaster right now. And as we see, one true beer beer locking, or hovering over, I should say, the troll, possibly, I would assume for the top lane, as we do have Ivor, and he's going to be going into the mid lane. Let's see what happens and here. Every time you talk about the troll, Fekas, I just have to look at some of these picks and think, you know, maybe a year ago, six months ago, you told me these would be meta champions. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have believed you, but now they are here. Uh, Ivern has kind of fallen in and out of popularity, but he's definitely in there. Maybe not quite so much now as we've moved to more of an aggressive jungle meta, but he still has insane utility, redemption, one of, if not the greatest item in the game, super great on him. We'll be seeing a lot out of him in the jungle. I'm surprised we didn't see the other tree Maokai out here, but we've got two tanky top laners, uh, some very impactful junglers, as junglers do tend to be nowadays. Uh, some interesting champions to look at when you talk about the Janna support and the Zerath in the mid lane for X Tray. Although, you know, certainly looking forward to seeing maybe whether or not he'll get that Katarina later on. He's one in Zerath today. And of course, last but definitely not least, a Malzahar support that. You so astutely called. Yeah, and that's actually okay. So, like I said, level six. Uh, that's going to be what it really, uh, really shows because Caitlyn throw a trap right under whenever he throws out his Nether Grasp onto a Jin. And of course, Janik has can do has like two things in her arsenal to actually interrupt the Nether Grasp. So we're going to see how that one turns out. But Jin is a very vulnerable target in that bot lane at level six mm -hmm. for a Caitlyn for a Malzahar. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Now, we haven't really talked about the mid lane too much. We have Zerath against an Orianna. Orianna is pretty meta right now. Uh, just a huge amount of utility. Saw a lot of her in World. Saw her a lot. A lot of her in IEM as well. Zara, mm -hmm. a little bit different, but she's going to be very safe in that mid lane. Even take uh, has taken Flash and Ghost over uh, a, a teleport or an exhaust or any sort of other um, sort of summoner spell. Right, yeah, goes for both mid laners. Uh, for Zerath specifically, that is going to allow him to, uh, on his roams, either look to uh, you know ghost into a good position. Uh, also allows him to avoid ganks. Zerath traditionally very immobile. He'll be using that summoner spell too. Uh, I think the most impactful thing for me is to see Nito take the Orianna away uh, from X Tray. Uh, his top two when it comes to mid laners are going to be Orianna and Katarina. So nice to see both of those denied. He's down here on the. Um, uh, on the Zerath, which is just not a pick that I am certainly used to see, uh, see used to seeing. Uh, but this is a whole new season uh, of ULOL Campus Series, and it's exciting to see some new picks, some new players, but some old returning teams looking to reestablish them in this twenty themselves in this twenty seventeen season. Yeah, I'm really excited for the ULOL Campus Series. This is the start of it. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to see how this go this one goes. Uh, we should probably break down a little bit of it. It is going to be five weeks of gameplay uh, for just the group stages and then it's going to be one week of uh, I guess a break for everyone to recuperate and then playoffs from there and that's the starts the road to the finals so we have a little bit of ways to go rapid it's going to be a long journey but it's going to be a lot of fun um, but my name is Joshua Fekes Quest I am here with Reed Rapid Casting Melton and I'm going to throw it over to a quick commercial break and we'll be back on the rift in just a moment Ben, Sam and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon well, let's just say luck isn't on their side if only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.
All right, welcome back, everyone. My name again is Joshua Fekes Quest. I am here with Reed Rapid Melton. Line of scrimmage being drawn. I always love seeing that on the rift. You know, this is certainly something that I am uh, always excited to see when there's nothing exciting to see. Yeah, <laughs> but right, what exactly. I'm most excited for, and I'm going to use that word a lot because it's actually just how I feel, uh, is not only another season uh, with very strong teams and players, but another uh, an entire new uh, you know, patch coming at us with 7.1. Lots of things to talk about there. Some new metas and, of course, our first game. The 2017 ULOL Campus Series coming our way. We're going to see it start out with a little bit of a trip into the enemy jungle there. Uh, one true very, very in Autumn Clouds walking up, seeing that they are being met there by Kira's support Malzahar, and just placing a little bit of a deep word to see exactly which side of the jungle uh, Massachusetts is going to be starting out on. Yeah, knowledge is power, and they are trying their best to get what they can. And we already saw that Janna shield come into effect. Uh, we saw the Autumn Cloud just walk right up to the uh, to the support Malzahar Kira and take a little bit of damage, but I mean the shield completely negated everything. Actually, he's full health right now anyway. So let's see how that plays out in the on the actual bot lane here. But we do know. Well, actually, I should say McMaster knows exactly where UMass is starting now. Mom Solo, he's going to be starting on the bot side. And that is one thing about Ivern. He can take jungle camps so quickly because he can just kind of. Let him sit it and forget it kind of thing. We go uh, come back, collect them, and uh, set them free. So that's what Ivan does. He's not a killer. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a lover, not a fighter. He is all about the passivity. Uh, they even had to patch uh, the uh, you know Ivan when he first came out so that you would not get marked as inactive if you didn't deal any damage because you were just farming through the jungle. So that is exactly how passive he is. But he is definitely not passive when it comes uh, to ganks. He's one of the strongest early gankers in the game. The ability to, to uh, not only lock down the guy that you're ganking uh, with the root collar, but allow the rest of your team to just jump on top of him. Very, very powerful, of course. Uh, used to be much stronger, the early slow from Trigger Seed. Now it does, uh, of course, DK is uh, only 40%. Not uh, not super, super high. But uh, one of the other cool things to see is not only just how passive uh, Ivern can be, but also how, you know, active. And so not only about the ganks early on, but also about getting that instantaneous counter jungling like you just saw Han Solo do. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the best part about having knowledge in the jungle is uh, being able to do something like that. And yeah, he can just, again, so fast for, uh, for an Ivern. So it's going to take a little bit of an advantage in the jungle early on at 9 CS, clear to 6 of the in, <laughs> but... See how relevant that actually becomes. So a new, uh, so you just saw Nautilus get a shield. One of the uh, newer, I guess, I guess it's newish for the season. Uh, new mastery for the season is Courage of the Colossus. So whenever you deal uh, some sort of, some sort of, a, what is it? A uh, crowd control. I was gonna say CC, but I don't like using the um, acronyms or, or abbreviations like that. Whenever you deal some sort of a crowd control, you do get a shield based on your level. And it, is a, it can be pretty powerful, especially if you're a jungler like a Zac and just dive in. You automatically have a shield. It's actually quite helpful, but... And there, there you go. Malefic Visions, shield, status quo in the bot lane. I'm gonna jump around. Uh, yeah. Courage of the Colossus is definitely very, very strong. You'll be seeing it from a lot of... Uh... Uh, a lot of top laners, especially since we do still see very tanky tanks up in the top lane. Um, but what I'm most excited for is not necessarily the uh, the new masteries, especially Courage of the Colossus. But now we've got, actually got a 2v2 up top lane. It's Dearest Andy who's actually going to be beset the 2v1 pretty much. He's going to blast his way all the way out of there and uh, make sure that he stays alive. But really great reaction there. Uh, Han Solo. Uh, saying, okay, well, it's not just about the 2v2. If we can make this a 2v1, which is not a little, a little bit slow to react, uh, you can definitely get that big advantage. You can already see on Solo putting that deep ward there at the Merc Wolves camp, and now coming back in for a gank on the mid lane. Okay, see, but it looks like Zareth, he's a very safe, uh, safe laner. Doesn't have to go really too deep to get, a, get the CS, so he's going to be safe. But, like you said, Han Solo laying down that ward, he actually sees the wolf spawn, and now he's going to take it away from Deer Standy. Yep, and because this is the new season, you're not going to spawn that little wolf spirit to give yourself sight of your own jungle. Just going to be able to take that one down. And of course, now going to uh, at least put a camp up on that Rift Scuttler, which we might be seeing a few new things with coming up soon. I'm just excited to see uh, Ivern already being aggressive and getting out there uh, to start to get McMaster their first real advantages of the game. Yeah, and Ao's uh, Jango, 
He knows that Dearest Andy had to go back. He was, had, was a little bit low on health. He knows that Han Solo took his wolf, so more than likely Dearest Andy won't be in the top side of the jungle once he sees that his camps are cleared. So he's being very aggressive here, not having too much fear. Uh, assuming, and assuming correctly, that Dearest Andy would be on the bot side. Now it looks like he is going to go place the deep ward, try to get himself some coverage. So when he is pushed up a little bit more, as Deer Sandy makes his way to the top lane, he will be ready. As he does find the Gromp in the jungle, that was not taken, as it was a uh, just respawn. So Deer Sandy's gonna get a little bit of his jungle, but he's still falling a hint behind. And uh, AO, it's Django. He's gonna keep that pressure in the top lane. Now Ivern coming up will now check this, and he's just a couple of steps behind. As Lee Sin, as they make their way up towards the top half of the map, interesting to see this game be so uh, so top centric, uh, because these are not necessarily snowbally, split pushy style top laners. But here comes Deer Danny looking for the game. Yeah, and he plays that deep war, but he got around it just fine. And actually, Han Solo is making his way into the top lane. If AO Jango, it's Django, can survive just long enough, he uses his ultimate to get a little bit of health back. But the first blood does go over to Deer's Andy after a flash. Han Solo, he's not able to do that 2v1 right now. So he's going to have to just keep the, tur uh, keep the turret protected and uh, keep the minions at bay. And first blood does go over to the University of Massachusetts. And wow, just really perfectly executed gank there on the top half side of the map. Leeson uh, kind of you know, struck first. He was the one to really take the first aggression, but dished it right back out and was able to pick up the first kill of the game there for Massachusetts. But UMass Amherst got to get some Amherst love out there. Uh, so one of the coolest things, if I can just take a few seconds to mention this, at least about uh, the ULOL Campus series or just collegiate esports in general, is that you know you don't have the biggest names in the entire world as far as professional gaming goes, but what you do have are incredibly passionate fans. So if you guys are at McMaster's or at University of Massachusetts Amherst uh, and are supporting your players and your teams, these are players, these are people, actual real people, that no. you guys are going to see walking around every single day. So if you know somebody that plays either today or tomorrow or whenever they do, make sure to say, hey, that's pretty cool, and uh, support your collegiate athletes out there, no matter what game they play. That's my little soapbox. No, it's it's incredible. It's, it's it's worth noting for sure because yeah, they, I mean, yeah, they. You can't just you can't really call them professionals because they're technically not, but they are playing for a huge prize with the ULL scholarship, and. Yeah, they're like you said. I mean, I kind of, I kind of said no on it. I kind of made it in jest. But yeah, there are people, and yeah, they are. They, they go to class just like you, or just like uh, anyone else on campus. So they're uh, taking life on at two two fronts here, just like any other collegiate athlete. So yep. cheer them, yeah, cheer them all whenever you see them. It's, uh, it's all right, really well, cool. Yeah, we digress there for just a second. This is our first game, so we're trying to cover all of our bases. Uh, let's actually go back and talk a little bit about what we just saw happen in, uh, in the uh, the game. Lee Sin had a very narrow takedown of his red buff camp that almost took him down, but now he's back out in the jungle. We are seeing him go for the more aggressive start, not going for any sort of Cinder Hulk nonsense. Uh, he is just going to go for... Uh, you know, the uh, Warriors in Now, top lane, this is where things might get a little bit uh, crazy. Oh, the flash burn! <laughs> Wordy didn't expect that much damage coming down. And uh, now mid lane, we've got uh, even more action out there. And yeah, Neto has to pop the barrier to try to get out. Actually, it's not a barrier. That was a shield, but he still went down. Anyways, shield from Holland Solar was not enough. He does have the uh, little gall in the rock column out there to try to keep oh. everyone at bay, but isn't going to be enough. And they're trying to throw everything they can. Han Solo gets stunned up. Are they going to have enough damage? Under the turret is X-Tray, but he's not going to go down. Han Solo did get a kill out of that one onto Dearest Andy, but X-Tray able to pick up the return kill. Ooh, just barely within range. Dearest Andy took that last turret shot, wound up going down, but knew that even if he did die, it wouldn't be in vain. X-Tray able to take that one down, and that blue buff is going to feel pretty good, uh, allowing him the uh, additional cooldowns, damage, getting it all out there uh, for the third kill of the game. University of Massachusetts not really just laying down without a fight. Uh, they came into this at least against a much bigger name in collegiate or in the uh, either the CSL or the ULL campus series and they're actually just going toe to toe yeah they're d uh, doing really well and that's the thing is that mcmaster was a big name last year um but so far it's uh they're having a little bit of cohesion trouble and like i said han solo the only one on the team from last year I, when, again we do believe tall white bro is still on the team as adc okay. but autumn cloud stepping in for him right now but yeah the uh synergy not quite there so yeah, university of massachusetts are taking advantage of it and getting the best of them right now three to two 14.9k to 14.7k doing very well but a little bit of a 
I guess a war control being established by uh, McMaster University toward the dragon. They may want to go after this one pretty soon. Yeah, we really haven't. Lane. Yeah, we really haven't talked about bottom lane at all. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that Wordy's going to be okay. He actually, is going to get pillared away from the blast seed, heading towards X Tray. Is he going to make it out alive? Stray, he's gonna try to do as much as he can, but there's only so much he can do. Flash from Han Solo, he picks up the kill. Underneath the turret, there is a shockwave coming out. X-Tray flashing out as well. And now here's Andy, he's in the mix, but nothing landing to stop them in their tracks. McMaster, yeah. they get a kill, they make it out, or do they? They're staying in, actually, hold on. Django going back in, huge dragon kick into the face of the McMaster, uh, I guess, a brother, a brother in there. Taking quite a bit of damage, and Dears Andy picking up that kill very nicely played. And he's got more if he wants to go for it. Both Nino and Han Solo were actually pretty low at that point, uh, but really, like you said, very well executed, at least in ultimate, getting the knockouts, going deep for it, recognizing that he did, in fact, have the support. And, uh, one of the things that I've been watching for at least this game, and really from all these CSL teams, is not just to see how individually talented they are, uh, but how well they work together as a team. That was really teamwork. Uh, Dear Sandy trusting x Tray to have his back, and set up that play very well executed nice to see uh okay well not nice to see that backwards laser in the mid lane but still uh very well executed some solidly sin play and it's it's paying off and it needs to because he uh, he did go for boots of mobility early that's to try to not start the snowball rolling uh, and it certainly does look like it's paying off now we finally focus on the bot lane a little bit, at least the camera does. But yeah, like you said, there's not been too much action, but uh, we can do a little bit of analysis toward it. Autumn Cloud is actually down 20 CS right now, so the uh, Malzahar Caitlyn duo in the bot lane, uh, it's paying off so far as they are denying him quite a bit and ever, ever so slightly getting that lead. And, and Han Solo, he has not been able to gank in the bot lane. They've been able to cover their tracks with the wards, cover the openings. And they've been doing fairly well right now. The up clouds, he's getting caught here. But there's the autumn clouds coming back in. There's the, no, there's the, uh, um, I'm sorry, I just blanked there. Janna, Janna ultimate to actually break up Kira's, Malzahar's, uh, gra uh, Nether Grass. So that's what I was talking about in Champion Select. You can't <laughs> quite get it as, like you want it gets Janna. Uh, yeah, and uh, in, in the lack of the player does not mean that we still can't see some great Janna mechanics here. One through Beery Beery, helping out his AD carry. Uh, and the dual lane will survive there. Uh, both junglers really showing their hand, though, off to the bottom side of the map. Uh, it does reveal that now the focus may be shifting a little bit away from that top lane-centric play that we saw uh, from the uh, the top and jungle duos uh, for the majority of this game. Uh, and like you actually mentioned earlier, Fekez, with the warding going down around the dragon, because it's a mountain drake, and that's generally a very high-priority dragon, uh, should be something that we see teams transition uh, to try to put some focus on. Yeah, and I'm surprised we haven't, but yeah, again, there's not been, there's been warding cover, uh, ward coverage and ward clearing from it, but surprised we haven't seen as much from that, uh, that dragon, but that's just, I get back, that might be the consequence of Han Solo not being able to get a positive gank onto the bot lane, but what did happen was, uh, Dearest Andy actually counter ganking, and they did take the first turret in the game, and now you still get that first turret, uh, it's almost like first blood for the turret, so you get that extra amount of gold for your team, and that's actually gonna help out UMass quite a bit. There's actually pulled up to 21.5k to 20.4k now, so increasing that lead little by little. Yeah, I always kind of thought it was a little bit weird to call it first blood for turrets because, you know, turrets don't generally bleed. You know, maybe if they're that special kind of turret I don't know about, then uh, somebody out there can let me know about that. But in general, it does give you that big boost to gold to everybody that's right there along with it. So nice to see that being picked up as the first turn of the game does go to University of Massachusetts Amherst, uh, who I should probably be calling the Minutemen. Not a lot of the teams in, in uh, ULAW Campus Series this season uh, did decide to name their collegiate clubs, but the Minutemen did, so I'll try to alternate between Minutemen, University of Amherst, gank coming in the middle lane. Oh man, yeah, Nito gets kicked right into his own turret, but now X-Tray cannot find the area to kill, uh, kill him with his ultimate, so that's going to be a nice play by Deer Sandy, but it's not capitalized on fully. Daisy, is he going to be able to knock up somebody here? Han <laughs> Solo with the flash gets that kill, but he's held underneath the turret, but one true Beery Beery with the Janna ultimate, able to break up the nether grass. Daisy, she's under, I guess it's a she, she, of course it's Daisy. She's under the turret. Gonna take up some of that, uh, some of that, those turret shots. And definitely gonna help pummel down this first mid lane turret. 
Yeah, Daisy does not fare well against turrets there, but she does fare well when she's getting in there, getting those th that three hit knockup. X Ray tried to channel his ult for maybe a little bit too long to try to kill Nito, who had ghost running, was very difficult to hit. Even though he did get the last one, it really wasn't worth it to stay in such a vulnerable position, ultimately led to his untimely demise. And while the rest of his team were there, uh, it was actually McMaster's University come out on top, uh, very well coordinated. And now we're starting to see things even up. Han Solo, Dearest Andy, now tied in, or at least tied in their kills and deaths. Uh, the assist, though, and more importantly, that re uh, redemption just having been, been bought might illustrate a shift in power between Dearest Andy, who was very strong early, and now that inevitability that the Han Solo uh, Ivern uh, will begin to bring to his team. You might be seeing that right now. Kira, he's going to be locked down. Shockwave but thrown onto him as well as the Tornado. He stood absolutely no chance. Nito picking up that kill in the mid lane onto Kira. Not just no chance, no movement. He did just stand there. So yeah, not a whole much. lot that he did. He got, kind of came in, got pitched against the wall. Beautiful reaction there. And now we might see a little bit more action yeah, around dude. that dragon area. Here's Andy using that dragon rage kick to knock back Han Solo. That is one thing about Ivern's Q is that whenever he throws it and lands it, not only does it root, but it brings everybody who auto attacks into auto attack range. So that's actually really huge, especially when you put a AOH Django in there with the trundle to get him in range immediately if the Han Solo Ivern's Q lands. But of course, you do that against Lee Sin and he has Dragon Rage kick up, he can just kick you right back. So see how oh, that here's Sandy. Might be thinking about going in for the steal. Uh, he does. Yeah, he, he missed his Q, so he would have had to just walk in there, decides against it. Uh, and that'll be the first dragon of the game, that Mountain Drake going to McMaster University. 17 minutes, and yeah, like you said, that is a high priority dragon. It's, I mean, uh, yeah, kills, kills are really good to have in the game, but objectives are even more so. Mountain Drake, surprised to see it go down so late, but it is finally down. And now, we do have the updated interface on the, uh, on the overlay here that from Riot, this is actually Riot's, that have the uh, Mountain Drake's logo there underneath McMaster, so don't have to guess on which, dra which dragon they have, so that's very helpful. So yeah, first dragon of the game going over to McMaster, being the Mountain, and that is going to help them push just that much more during this later part of the, part of the game. Wow, already getting a chance to see some of the hallmarks for both of these teams. Things to focus on, not just in this game, but for the entire season. Uh, there's going to be a lot of League of Legends, and uh, you're going to kind of keep up with the individual story. So here are a couple of things you can see is that both junglers, very, very high impact. Uh, the duo lanes may be a little bit lower impact. They're still sporting big zeros up there for either AD carry. Whether or not you believe that that is a commentary on the state of the role right now, at least the way these two teams are playing, uh, it's been about the rest of the map. So now we're talking about the rest of the map, moving from one objective on one side to the other. We're on that Rift Herald, and it certainly does look like McMaster are about to take down what uh, my co-caster here, LS, likes to call the luxury objective, and uh, we'll be able to do it relatively uncontested. Uh, that's a very apt term for it because it's not absolutely needed. It gives you a little bit of pushing power. Hold on. It's like Nautilus. <laughs> We're Toy. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's trying to get up there. And I don't think it's going to be panning out too well for him. Going to hit the explosion. Flower, he doesn't go anywhere. That means he is going to hell pretty soon. Oh, oh, my. Soon. So, no, is he going to get away? Oh, Daisy my can, God. Daisy's going a little too slow. Gets the big circle around him, so he's not going to be able to catch up there. And now, yeah, Nautilus, he ends up staying alive. Now Han Solo may be in trouble, but A.H. Django going to be chasing down Kira, who flashes over the wall, so that's a summoner spell down. But overall, I don't think anyone's picked up the, uh, um, the Rift Herald buff yet. I think it's... No, 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 that was a ward down there. Right, somebody did pick up the Rift Herald buff. I actually missed who picked it up, but be it as it may, that's all that happened, despite how much action just uh, transpired there. Wow, yeah, AOH Django, uh, the top lane Trundle, did pick up that uh, Glimpse of the Void, so he'll have that for the next 15 minutes up in the top lane for McMaster. What just happened was a little bit crazy. Essentially, it's a University of Massachusetts not recognizing how weak they are individually, a little bit uncoordinated in trying to come in there and stop that. Uh, Wordy actually got a little bit uh, overzealous in trying to get in there and uh, make that objective, or try to steal the objective, or uh, just disrupt it a little bit. He got caught out, he was forced to flash away, the team tried to save him, and then everybody just had to retreat. 
Uh, so the first of uh, quite a few big advantages that McMaster has been able to pick up here, and now Wordy might be in trouble again, but this time he's got some help. Yeah, AO Django may be in trouble as they are converging into the top lane. There's another grass onto him. He is going to go down. Kira actually picks up that kill after the Dragon's Kick, but hold on, in the mid lane, up the, uh, the up clouds, he's going to go down. Double kill for Nito. Actually picked up X-Tray as well. So huge, huge play in the mid lane from McMaster. And that's something we haven't really pointed out here, is that Nito, he is 40 CS over X-Tray. He's actually really powerful right now, which is what I was checking before that fight in the top lane was the gold value, the gold difference. It was about 500 earlier. Now it's 1,500. McMaster, they are going to shove into the inner mid lane turret now. Wow, and yet Kira was top lane, no support there for the up clouds. AD carry went down, nothing to stop that middle lane turret uh, from falling as well. That'll uh, indicate the shift that you saw in the first turret of the game. It did go to University of Massachusetts in the bottom lane. Now all that's being turned over, it's Massachusetts bottom lane that's having a little bit of trouble, and uh, McMaster that's coming up big when it comes to objectives. Two turrets, Dragon, Rift Herald, and they're just all over the map, just making these crazy rotations happen. Sure, they did lose their top laner, but who cares? They're making it happen everywhere else on the map. Yeah, one thing we didn't point out either, that is that uh, the Upclouds and Kira, yeah, they have the Caitlyn and the Malzahar, but they didn't really go off. They've, they've been at 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero for quite a while up until that fight where uh, the Upclouds finally died. As you can see, Autumn Cloud still, hold on, the Up Clouds might be actually going down again, but he is able to net, uh, 90 caliber net out of the way. Here's Andy now making his way to the bot lane. Hey, it's Django. I don't know if he can fight this one, but now he can with one true beer beery there. Ace in the hole coming out into the back line, from the back lines, I should say. And there's a flash and dragon kick into AO. It's Django, but the one true wow. beer beery Janna ult going to heal him up just enough so he can absorb those tower shots and everything else that was thrown at him. Such a nice, crisp play by McMaster. What true Beery Beery? I gotta say, man, somewhere out there, the ghost of Janna Mechanics is watching and maybe giving a little bit of a blessing over here because that was spectacular. The monsoon healing just barely enough to allow AoE Chang to go in there, get that kill, healing him back up with not only the monsoon, but you could also see that King's Tribute kick in. Oh my god, that was so sick! And now, along with that, that's gonna give McMaster yet more objective advantages across the map. Uh, the bottom outer turret being taken down to secure a takedown just about uh, or on every single outer turret as now they look for more advantages in that upper jungle. Yeah, the uh, Inferno Drake, it is, he is coming up in about 20 seconds, so McMaster, they want to back, recuperate, maybe focus on this dragon a little bit. Is it's another priority dragon? Oh, I mean, you can't say any of them are not priority dragon. Maybe we say it's Cloud Drake, but it still has its purpose, but... Having more power for the overall, for the entire team is always good. And of course, that percentage of power increase does actually give you more damage to the turrets as well. So it's not as effective as a Mountain Drake, but it does get the job done overall. And you still want that Inferno Drake. But AOH hey, Django, he's going to just battle underneath the turret against Dearest yeah. Andy. Can he do this? Dear Sandy doesn't know what he's messing with no, here. Doesn't. Actually, he might have been able to just barely turn it around, but wow. <laughs> you got to respect, you got to put some respect on this name, the Trundle. Super massive right now, and no, I don't mean the Turkish L, uh, uh, LCL team. Wait, no, LCL is CIS. Uh, TCL, there you go. I believe you no matter what you say, Rapid. Well, let's just not go that far. That's a dangerous statement to make, my friend. All right, so I thought the Inferno Drake was coming up, but it was actually the Cloud Drake, <laughs> so I guess the Drake just looks the same no matter what in the left uh, top left-hand corner. Even though the Drakes do look different, I guess I thought they implemented that, but they haven't. So it's the Cloud Drake up right now, so... A little bit less of a priority as I was talking about that. <laughs> Maybe it could be less priority and we're going to see how little of a priority it truly is. If you really want to get into it, that could be considered a luxury dragon. As uh, it does increase the movement speed, which is nice for map rotations, but when you're team fighting like this, it does become a little bit less priority. But Han Solo doesn't care, he just wants objectives because the next dragon could be an Infernal Drake as they are based on RNG. So he's going to pick this one up. But I love this mechanic, throwing the bush right into the dragon so you can't see it from the other side. Uh, yeah, at least in blind though he may be still capable of stealing that over the wall, but he has to be there in order to do that. He was down in the bottom lane, not able to steal that one away. Uh, Upclouds tried with the belt over Peacemaker, but even that was not enough. And that's going to be the second dragon of the game going McMaster's way. And I, I really love what they're doing here. They're saying, look, we're stronger. We need to put that strength to use. So they're forcing objectives and they're making it happen, uh, making it pay off for themselves every single time. Uh, and in the, in the meantime, Autumn Clouds, who 
actually had a pretty rough time in lane phase, came out of lane about 25 CS down. They actually have said, hey, let's put you in a lane by yourself, all the way up top lane, away from that objective, uh, where you can farm things out to get your way back in the game. Now it might be Kira that's in trouble. Yeah, they did flash the Shockwave, but he's not going to flash Daisy, and that's really the biggest threat on the Rift right now. <laughs> Just tumbling or wherever he wants, she wants to. If you call it he, it's a she. Although you shouldn't assume someone's gender, but, uh... Hold on, are they trying to s are they creating their own fanatic? Look at that, they're creating their own fanatic push camp. That is so pretty. But <laughs> Nautilus actually gets caught. I don't know if it's because of that or you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, but be it as it may, has to flash away. Curtain call coming out. It does not pick up the kill. Nito actually does. 412 right now. Autumn Cloud, ace in the hole is gonna be blocked. One Treviri picking up that bullet for him. And now it looks like McMaster. They're just gonna Kind of dissipate that uh, that objective, and then oh, actually they might be rotating to, to Baron. They don't know yet. But AOH Django, he's been shoving this bot lane this entire time, and with that Mountain Drake, not to mention he does have an auto attack reset with his bite, he can take the, uh, take turrets very quickly. Absolutely true. Uh, Malzahar, even though he's a support, is still going to be great at pushing. Although AOH Django is just so strong right now, especially in a one v ones when the glimpse of the void works out. Um, or works uh, the best, or actually just works at all. Um, gonna make it very difficult to push against. So he's very, very strong, and yeah. it's gonna be uh, important to watch that wall X tray. Yeah. Might need some X rays after that. <laughs> he got uh, a little bit bopped on. Now oh! here's Andy. Gonna get knocked away by the monsoon. One true beer beer. He is such a clutch player this game. Doing fantastic. Able to <laughs> monsoon away the incoming dearest Andy with the. Uh... Uh, hold on, hold on, with the resonating strike, but hold on, AO it's Django, AO it's Django, he's uh, still fighting in the bot lane, he's not left this entire time. This is when collegiate gaming gets really fun, when things just start going full tilt and uh, chaotic here, because uh, I feel like we don't stop talking, Rapid. I, I mean, it's just back and forth, back and forth, there's things to talk about actually happening, there's things to talk about about the things actually happening. Yeah, exactly. Lots of go stuff going on, bottom lane, nothing can stop this trundle, an absolute force to be reckoned with, and we'll see if they can reckon with it. Akira is there, Nautilus is there, X-Tray is there, they're locking him down, they're throwing everything they have at him, they finally pick him off, but he did pick up the bot lane inhibitor turret, and it looks like Dearest Andy, I don't know why they pulled off of uh, up the Baron, but Dearest Andy was hanging, he's still hanging out there actually, he's not backing, so we'll see what they decide to do, it looks like everybody's going to finally back, recuperate, rendezvous back to, you know, wherever death may claim, with some new items, yeah, hopefully. Dear Sandy specifically needs to get out of there. I mean, I, I respect him kind of guarding that objective and, you know, go, being willing to go for the steal if that's what his team needed. But he's got to get back out there. He went for this aggressive Lee Sin build. Uh, and now, of course, he's transitioning to tankier, uh, which is uh, very, very good considering that his team is a little bit further behind. Um, he uh, he needs to get out there. He's starting to drop down in levels. He's certainly not going to be able to take this one on one against Han Solo, who even though he's built supportive items, has levels, has the ability to just survive through the lack of damage since Dear Sandy didn't totally snowball out of control. So uh, some some really big question marks uh, as we do see the game you know, transcend just the early stages get in onto the mid and late. Uh, and, and while the biggest advantage for University of Massachusetts was their duo lane earlier on, uh, now that's just been all but negated. Some real struggles for the up clouds uh, in these last few fights. Yeah, I do actually want to give a shout out to the up clouds because he still only died one time and has a, hold on, there's a big fight. Han Solo, he's caught right in the middle here. Redemptions goes down as does Monsoon. There's a huge amount of damage coming out. Double kill for Han Solo. McMaster, they have complete control of this one. X-Tray, is he going to be able to get away? He does, he pops his ghost, and now Wurtoy, I'm gonna try to pronounce that name, the Nautilus, he is caught in the middle of everything here. And meanwhile, AOH Django, that was a 4v kind of 5-ish there, as AOH Django just pushing in onto the bot inhibitor now. And the up clouds, I was giving him some credit because it's only died once, but <laughs> he's just gonna peck away here. Hold on. He might have. I mean, AO Django may die here, but he, he's gonna, you know, hashtag worth this one because he got the inhibitor in the bot lane, finally going down. X Tray picking up that kill, but now McMaster able to pick up the Baron into, uh, well, uh, going into 30 minute mark, I should say. And they're gonna use those powered backs and get back to the to base. Except for Han Solo and Autumn Clouds are actually gonna push a little bit and take some buffs. 
Wow, uh, I just gotta right. say, impressed by AO, it's Django. Even though he did go down, it's at what cost. He secures the Baron for his team. Because, uh, he pretty much knew they're gonna have to send more than one person down to the bottom lane to stop him. The up clouds just had nothing to say about uh, uh, the Trundle taking that inhibitor. Inhibitor, Baron, really everything going. Uh, University of, or not Massachusetts, but uh, McMaster's uh, way at this point. Uh, it's kind of struggling, at least for me, to see ways back into the game, but because we haven't really seen how either one of these teams close out games this season with these lineups, it's not over uh, until it's over. And it is a best of three, so any time that's delayed with University of Massachusetts, they can think about what to do next game. Maybe revamp the pick and ban phase, maybe even try to... I, don't know, I really don't think they did uh, poorly in the early game. They were actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with McMaster. They're just getting out-rotated and out, uh, out-classed right now. Definitely out-scaled. So they may have to think about what to do during that early game and launch themselves, just like McMaster has. Verte is going to be locked down, but they're going to walk out. Not exactly the target. You want to try to burst down. It's hard bursting down a big Nautilus like that. Master, they are shoving into this inner, uh, this uh, yeah, inner top lane turret. Meanwhile, they have actually have a, a three one one split push going on as Nido hanging yep. out in the mid lane and AH Django going back to that bot lane despite there being no inhibitor. Yep, exactly. Very, very uh, good decision to go for that split. Uh, really highlights the Trundle's power. He's down there drawing two down, two in the mid lane as well, and that's really just going to surrender this upper outer turret. Uh, it'll be the sixth, uh, seventh actually turret of the game taken down. Uh, whip on that shockwave there by Nito, and actually he might be the one in the rough spot. Uh, Nito, uh, yeah, he, he stays alive. Never mind. <laughs> And darn dear Sandy, it was a little too deep on that one. I would agree with you if he agreed with you if he stayed in the in the base, but decided to go as far as he possibly could. And now the top lane inhibitor going down, top lane uh, being shoved in completely, along with the mid lane and McMaster. They're looking to close this one out rapid. Uh, they certainly are crushing through not one but all three inhibitors. Uh, even Daisy's gonna come out and play hey. as they close in on these last two Nexus turrets. Uh, should not be staying alive very much longer. Daisy is my favorite champion, by the way. Just want to throw that one out there. Ao, it's Django. He's absorbing everything underneath the turret. Oh my God. Here comes Redemption. <laughs> it's gonna heal him even wow. more. Along with his King's Guard, he is not going to die. Now, actually, despite that, he has actually two, five, and three. But you can see that doesn't even matter. He's given his life for quite the great cause here. Nito goes legendary with that last kill. I mean, and the Nexus does go down. McMaster, they take game number one. Wow, and not only do they take it, they they wrap it up. Uh, it's, it's sitting under the tree. They unwrap it. They're like, "Wow, this is what is this? this? Is our first win of the 2017 ULOL Campus Series?" And it's gotta feel good. Things were a little bit, uh, you know, back and forth early on. Both teams trading blows, but in the end, a dominant performance. And University of Massachusetts Amherst are gonna have to take some time and uh, think about how they want to come back in game number two because. Like you said, Fekas, it is a best of three, so they'll only have one more chance to tie things up. Yeah, and before we get into that game number three, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Band Gaming is a social app and primary social app for CSL with many features such as creating groups, boards, calendar functions, polls, chats, or anything, and even recent, uh, they added a recent call functionality. It is the preferred social media uh uh, a social app, I should say, for CSL. So join us at the CSL. Join us the CSL. Join the CSL community. I'll get this out rapid. Don't worry. Join the CSL community at band.us slash at C Star League. Good job, Pekas. Thank job. you. Uh, I just I really wanted that praise at the end. I was like, I messed up. I'll I'll keep going. No worries. Don't worry, guys. We'll not only get better at casting these games, showing you these games, we'll also get better at our plugs along the way. So hopefully, uh, we'll be able to add some humor in there and uh, help. Uh, help you help us by supporting us through not only supporting band gaming, but we do want to give a quick shout out before we head off to our commercial break uh, by welcoming back Asus Republic of Gamers, our sponsor this season. Uh, if if you use computer stuff, chances are they make a super sick version of it. So definitely go check out Republic of Gamers for some of the top end uh, gaming equipment out there, whatever you may need. We do want to thank them for returning to help us show you even more amazing uh, Collegiate Star League action here in the ULOL Campus series. Also, big thanks to Twitch. That's the service you are watching this on uh, for supporting us and allowing us to bring this broadcast to you guys. We'll be back to plug a lot more and, of course, also to bring you some more of the 
the ULL Campus Series with game number two coming up next between McMaster University and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Stick around.